Well, I welcome you all to this Good Friday service. Today we will be reading the seven final words of Jesus on the cross, and after each of the readings, there will be a short reflection, a short thought that either Jasmine or I will provide on the passage. But before we do that, we will enter into a time of confession. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Christ the Lord became obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We pray you of your mercy, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, look graciously, we pray, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. There's a story about Joseph Stalin, former dictator of the Soviet Union, a man known for his paranoia and unfeeling cruelty. Apparently, there is somebody in one of his torture chambers who, despite the sincerest efforts of the secret police, simply would not break down and make the kind of confession he wanted. In great fear, an agent of the secret police came to see Comrade Stalin to tell him of the resistance of this particular prisoner. Comrade Stalin only listened, and after hearing the full report, the dictator asked the agent in all seriousness, Tell me, sir, how much do all of the armament factories, tanks, planes, bombs, and missiles of the Soviet Union weigh in total? The agent laughed nervously, thinking the dictator was making a joke. I ask you a question, said the dictator, not showing even the faintest hint of a smile behind his dark mustache. Comrade Stalin, I just don't know. The weight, it's simply incalculable. Right, Stalin said. Surely with the weight of the entire Soviet Union, you must be able to break one single political prisoner. Our Lord Jesus Christ bore the weight of far more than the Soviet Union's weapons on his shoulders. On the cross, Jesus bore the appalling weight of centuries of human cruelty, destructiveness, war, and greed. Although he knew no sin, our Lord Jesus Christ took the full burden of human sin on himself. Although he was no criminal, he died with criminals. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. It is only through the one who bears the full weight of human sin on his shoulders that we, the criminals that we are, receive forgiveness. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. And the people stood by looking on, and even the rulers were sneering at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now there was also an inscription above him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuked him and said, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. How common of us to want God to prove himself. Like the crowd, the rulers, and the criminal, we also sneer at Jesus and demand that he would prove that he is the chosen one of God by saving himself. Isn't the point of being God and being powerful to avoid death and suffering? After all, if he cannot save himself, how will he save us? Yet one of the criminals who was also hanging on a cross saw things differently. 
While they were suffering justly, Jesus had done nothing wrong, and his suffering is completely undeserved. In our demand for proof, we should remember that one criminal saw the truth, that Jesus did nothing wrong and yet was crucified for us, and this is the greatest proof of his divinity and the greatest proof of the love of God for all humanity. Who other than God could lay down his innocent life for us? A reading from the Gospel of John. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Mary and the beloved disciple do not know it yet, but because of Jesus' sacrifice, the age-old chasm, the empty void which has existed between God and sinful humanity has been filled. Men and women once alienated from God the Father now become his sons and daughters. They are drawn together into one great family called the body of Christ, the church. So Jesus, looking down upon his loving mother, declares, Woman, here is your son. And to his closest friend, he says, Here is your mother. John must now care for and support a mother who has lost her son. Mary, too, must love John as if he were her very own son. They are now family. They are blood relatives, just as all of us who are members of this church community are blood relatives. And the blood that binds us together is the blood of the Lamb. As family, as blood relatives, we are called to take care of one another and look after one another, just as John and Mary did at the request of their Lord. How can you take care of your brother and sister in Christ, even in this time of social isolation? A reading from Matthew's Gospel. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lamak sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eli Wiesel spent his mid-teens in Auschwitz, the notorious Nazi concentration camp established prior to the outbreak of the war. In his book, Night, Wiesel recalls the hanging of three prisoners, all of whom had been accused of stealing weapons. He writes, three condemned prisoners stepped onto the chairs. In unison, the nooses were placed around their necks. Where is merciful God? Where is he? Someone behind me was asking. At the signal, the three chairs were tipped over. Total silence in the camp. Then came the march past the victims. The third rope was still moving. The prisoner, too light, was still breathing. And so he remained for more than half an hour, lingering between life and death, writhing before our eyes. Behind me, I heard the same man asking, for God's sake, where is God? And from within me, I heard a voice answer, where is he? This is where, hanging from the gallows. As a Christian, there is much that I can agree with in Wazel's story, for in the face of appalling suffering, unspeakable cruelty, we know that God is not watching from a distance, but standing among us and feeling the worst of our pain. For we believe in a God who becomes man. And having become man, our Lord himself cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
In the midst of our grief and suffering, if we turn to God and ask, where are you? He points to the bleeding figure hanging from the Roman cross and says, this is where I am, my beloved. A reading from John's Gospel. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Once, when Jesus was teaching the crowds, he declared, let anyone who is thirsty come and let anyone who believes in me drink. For as the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow streams of life-giving water. Jesus himself claims to be a source of life-giving water, water which can quench our deepest and most intimate thirst. Our thirst for love, our thirst for peace, our thirst for meaning and significance. How ironic then that in his dying moments, Jesus himself hanging on the cross beneath the heat of the blazing Middle Eastern sun is utterly dry and parched. He seems to be totally lacking in peace and joy. In fact, he's in deep agony. It is because Jesus is willing to bear the suffering of this agonizing thirst. It is through this sacrifice of his that you and I are able to receive the life-giving waters that flow from his side. This life-giving water is the Holy Spirit herself poured out upon us by Jesus Christ, who suffered and thirsted and died for us. A reading from Matthew's Gospel. And some of those who were standing there, when they heard it, began saying, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran, and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. But the rest of them said, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Even while Jesus was hanging on the cross, while he was dying and suffering, the onlookers still stood there, still waiting for something to happen. Would Elijah come and save Jesus? Yet for Jesus, it is not a time to call out, but a time to bow his head to the will of the Father and to announce that he has accomplished what he came to do on earth. We know that Elijah did not come to save him. Instead, Jesus gave up his spirit for us. Strange as it seems, this is good news and makes this dark Friday good. A reading from Luke's Gospel. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. The death of Jesus Christ is something that forever changed the world around us and that forever changed us. All of creation mourned as darkness covered the land. Yet even at this terrible moment, when the earth trembles and the world mourns, Jesus uses his last strength to cry out loudly and place his spirit into the Father's hands. Jesus is faithful to the last moment. Jesus changed our relationship with God and as the veil in the temple was torn, we are brought into a closer relationship with him. Were you there when the cool 
crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? when they nailed him to the tree. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when the sun refused to shine. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Well, I thank you for joining us for our Good Friday service today, and I hope you have a blessed uh, Easter weekend. Of course, our next service will be Easter Sunday, and I hope to have it uploaded by, let's say, Saturday noon at the latest. So please continue to check your email inbox for that service, and I will join you um, virtually online um, as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Send down your abundant blessing, Lord, upon your people, who have devoutly recalled the death of your Son in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Grant them pardon. Bring them comfort. May their faith grow stronger and their eternal salvation be assured. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen.